Here we go with the 5th, 7th flat 9 chord, our favorite chord in flamenco, which in fact is the main chord. In this case, I will use the scribing scale from the flat second of such 5th, 7th flat 9 chord. Sounds as follows. We do have uh, the 5th note of the chord, of the 5th, 7th flat 9 chord there as a target note or landing note. But anyway, listen how it sounds. Thank you. 
the use of the Spreveling scale from the flat second of a fifth, seven flat nine chord. This is especially relevant for flamenco. All of these usages are relevant because Paco de Lucia, fortunately, he broke those old uh, blind barriers there, which were the, uh, we can say that when harmony became stagnant in flamenco, which was all the time, Paco came and destroyed those barriers. And now we are able to explore over new venues and give more, much more possibilities to the thing. Now, of course, we have to remember this is a, a class of harmony, and it's a class of harmony for for the first for the level advanced one, which means level seventh. Unless we have done the other six levels, beginners one, two, and three, intermediate one, two, and three, it's very unlikely that you will get the the whole thing all straight together because there is a progression to understand harmony we need to know what a chord is first of all what the Andalusian chords are which are the substitutes of those chords which scales we could use to describe those chords because the whole idea is that uh, Paco had, had this emotional contender to to play something which describes the chord in a way that sounds flamenco and that can be done with any scale he did with the whole tone which is most unlikely flamenco sound so called you can never think but he used it in a way as he used every scale in a way except pentatonic scale he did not use that <laughs> was a bit against uh, to that but uh, that's another thing anyway the thing is that you can use any scale in, in flamenco contemporary and use it in a way that sounds like flamenco well, that's up to your knowledge and the way you can use it obviously that doesn't happen there is no formulas here that by pressing one button you you get the sound you need to explore the thing know the fingering know where to use it practice on, on the supervision know what the remate is what is the basic aesthetics of flamenco there uh, anyway the beginning of these videos of the series I played some phrases there which do have this cabin scale for you to, to see how this can be used for cante flamenco embellishment or to play a solo of course to, to compose a piece and this is most malleable scale in fact here we see that it has in total we have five use five usages for minor chords from the fourth of the minor chord from the flat second and from the flat third very suitable for a four minor with the bass of the flat second in our Andalusian cadence and also from the flat six and from the flat five of a subdiminished chord which means five uses five usages and then we have one for major chords uh, over the second and then we have eight close to eight use let me see yes we have eight ways to use it for dominant alter chords from the first from the flat second from the flat third from the third from the fourth with this exception exceptional thing of having the flats the major seventh on it describing the dominant chord which is a very contemporary stuff and then we have from the four augmented and from the flat six and from the flat seven so no scale in the world ever like, you know, this composer, Scriabin, was a genius between the genius. So that's why Chick Corea and these very evolved people, harmonically, musically, are studying Scriabin music. And they took from him so many ideas. Hopefully we can also do that. In fact, Paco said, we need to explore every territory, which is possible to explore and see what is there just like when you are if you are searching gold gold or diamonds or something in the mind you need to excavate there and see what it is there so it will come maybe uh, first just dirt or not what you are expecting stones or i don't know but the thing is that first you need to do this exploration and this exploring things this is this is the territory that is what why Paco de Lucia did what he did and that's why he kept saying that we need to 
go into the realm of improvisation and, and, and understand what the stagnant parrot stuff of falsetto playing is. Falsetto playing is nothing but, but parroting and more sad than that is that it will be also parroting done if it's taken as the all in all. It becomes just parroting which is also notes made by others. This is not even your own creation, but you're playing notes made by someone else. So that's not the Paco Lucia style, obviously. In fact, he, he didn't say, if you practice my albums and play it like classic music, which I never did, by the way, because this is another thing that Paco never played one piece twice same. He never played, actually, the version of the album version live, because he always switched things, changed phrases, changed notes, changed intentions, changed order of the falsetto, etc. You know that already. And for those who do not know, I will post the description of this uh, video, the videos which, on which you can see him saying that. So the point is that you can create your own music inside this thing and learn from Paco what we can learn from him. And now then you can develop your own personality. You're not copying anything either. Because actually, that's why great masters of music existed before. And the proof of this is Scriabin, because he, he lived 42 years only. And of course, I think he died in, in 1915. So more than 100 years ago, this music is, his music is, is still ultra avant-garde thing. You can see that this is scale, which I am very thankful to Leonard Bernstein for this, because it all happened that how we came up with this scale of scrabbing is that I made some series uh, in which Leonard Bernstein explained also the so about the sophistication of folklore and how great music comes out of the whole the content of music in the, in the universe or in the planet or whatever you want to say. And everything has an origin. So Paco de Lucia used whole tone, but from where did he took that? In minor melodic contemporary usages, from where did he took that? He took it from Chick Corea and from McLaughlin, and from 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 whom these two other composers took that. Obviously, from Debussy and from the impressionist composers. Debussy was the first one who included this whole tone thing. The tritone has a very deep implication into music, into modern music. It's very important to understand these things deeply and not superficially, and therefore. Uh, these videos here are for advanced level, right? This is for advanced one, at least. And we are just talking of how to use it raw. This chord with this scale, but even to understand that, we need to know harmony. Otherwise, you don't get this because this is it's just like look. If you try to understand a music lesson beyond your level, it's the same. Like if I, for example, I like chess. And now try to analyze a puzzle or, or something you have to answer questions about a chess game of level, I, I don't know, 2800 rating, like champion of the world rating. And now those guys who analyze these things, they are also very high rating <laughs> or to, to talk about it and to understand the nuances. Otherwise, I, I don't get one thing. I just see the pieces there. Yeah, but the real thing is that you cannot jump over the gradient this way with the level, because then otherwise it's like if you try to analyze a great master chess game and you only have played in the Starbucks there with friends, don't know, you cannot understand the, the games of Mikhail Tal or the Carlsen games or I don't know, Bobby Fischer or other great chess players with that meager knowledge, you need to study, right? So harmony is also the same way, right? Some things may seem strange, but are not really. Once you have knowledge and you study the thing, then you can do everything. Otherwise, this, this will be just uh, not good. And of course, the rationalizations come to the mind. Many people will say, well, after all, after all that is not flamenco, or that is, this is a Russian composer. What does it have to do with this? You can say anything, but the translation will be, I cannot understand this material, and I feel bad that I am an ignorant. Therefore, I have to say this nonsense. Like, what does it have to do with this with that? Ask Paco de Lucia what it has to do. It has to do everything. That's why Paco includes their foreign elements to enrich this music, which originally was folklore. 
for Cloric only. And I will quote, because Paco said this exactly, that this music does not belong anymore to the cliché way that we think it, it belonged, but actually this is part of all humanity and, and, and in fact it's a very deep and very beautiful thing to study. So we will continue doing more and this is the first, the initial thing about the harmonic features of the mystic scriabin mystic scale. Me digo porque descubrí ahí el, la improvisación. La improvisación es algo que yo pienso que cada músico debería, cada músico del estilo que sea, del clásico, del flamenco, de cualquier otra música, debería, debería aprender porque la improvisación te da mucha libertad y a la vez te da mucho conocimiento de, de dónde estás tocando, de cómo estás tocando, de qué armonías están en cada momento. ¿no?